taking truth and giving it a wicked interpretation. And God snuffed out his life but left him as an example. Brother, that was the act of a devil. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad didn't do nothing but good for Malcolm. But Malcolm turned on his master. You, you got about Go ten more minutes, please. In my last conversation with Malcolm, he said, Brother, my enemies one day will be yours. And he said, I wish it was you being an example for me rather than me being an example for you. I didn't know what the hell he was talking about either. But when Malcolm started blaspheming the messenger, he said, Brother Farrakhan, or Brother Lewis as he called me then, what do you think about it? I said, I think there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. I said, uh, I got to go. I lived in Boston then. Malcolm put me in his car and was driving me to LaGuardia Airport. He said, Brother Lewis, don't tell nobody what I told you. I said, no, sir. I'm not going to tell nobody but the messenger. And I seen him jump. The next morning, 5 o'clock, Malcolm called me and said, Brother, give me a little time before you tell the messenger so I can write the messenger a letter and explain to him why I did what I did. I said, Well, brother, I said, it's going to take me some time to get my head together just to write the messenger what you told me. So if you can get your letter off, in the meantime, you help yourself. I couldn't sleep. I thought I was going crazy. I went to my study and I opened up this book as Allah is my judge to the 33rd chapter of the Holy Quran that talks about the wives of the messenger. And I ran back to New York, spent my last $30 and said, here it is, Malcolm. He said, I know it. He knew the truth. But he had grown to hate his master. And that's why he couldn't tell the truth properly because his heart was too full of hate. He's gone. And I stood up and became the spokesman of the man you call Moses. Wallace never was his spokesman. I was his mouthpiece. You can't deny that. I spoke for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I made 350 broadcasts, every one of them approved by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So if you listen to any broadcast that I made where I said Elijah Muhammad was the Jesus, he approved it and sent it out. There wasn't one broadcast that came forth that Farrakhan spoke on that Elijah Muhammad did not hear first. Maybe a few that he let um, Valor and Najib hear, I think. And uh, I think there was a very few. But let's leave that alone. But the real Judas is coming up. Now notice how Judas starts. Mary and Martha, see it's over women again. Mary and Martha got some ointment and they are rubbing and anointing Jesus' feet. And as they're anointing Jesus' feet, Judas is looking on. Now evidently, those women doing that for Jesus struck something in his heart. And that's the same thing that happened with the son of David, Absalom. He saw David's wives and wanted David's wives. 
that has both a physical and a spiritual meaning, brothers and sisters. Because Wallace has cohabited with the spiritual wives of the messenger who were his ministers. And it's written in the book, 200 men of renown followed after Korah. And when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad left us, he had 200 temples and 200 ministers, and practically everyone went right behind Wallace. Why did they do that? Why did you do it, Farrakhan? Was it because you was a punk? I want to let you know, brother, and all of you in here, this ain't no punk talking. If all of these brothers got the hell out of here and went back to where they came from, I tell it just like I see it and die on it and kill on it, because Muhammad didn't make me no faggot, and I didn't shut my mouth February 26, 1975, because I was afraid. You don't know the inside of me until you ask me or ask God. And I know if you tell me that God revealed to you that I was afraid, I'll tell you, bring your God and I'll kick his butt because he'd be a damn liar. There wasn't no fear in me. Just like some child nigga came to my house the other day and told me what his God revealed to him that Farrakhan was dipping in the treasure. I said, go bring your God, and I'll snatch his so-and-so tongue right out of his mouth and yours along with him. I ain't never taken as much as a dime or as little as a penny from the nation. And I'll die on that, and I'll kill on that. I've been lied on, I've been slandered, I've been evil spoken of. That's why I came to see you. So you could see the man that you've been hearing all this crap about and look at me, listen to me, feel me, question me if you want to. No, you don't know me. And I think if you don't know me, then let's get acquainted. Let's get acquainted. Brother and sister, when I started rising and becoming popular, now remember, no man can see himself. He needs his brother as a mirror to help him see himself. I don't know how I look to you all. I thought I was fairly humble, but I kind of found out later that I was a little arrogant. And I was kind of proud. And and I love God, but I kind of sort of love some of the world too. Allah knew that, and the messenger knew all of that, because he could see into men and women. And nobody come and sit at his table to fool him. He just maneuvered you in such a way that you didn't even know you were being maneuvered till you just showed your total self. Oh, brother, the man was and is a master. And he masters us right now from wherever he is. If he's in the grave, he's a master. If he's in heaven with Allah, he's a master. Wherever he is, he's the master of what's going on right now. He told me once about Elisha. When they put Elisha down in the grave, he said the bones of a dead man shook in the grave. He said, do you know what that means, Brother Farrakhan? I said, no, sir, dear Parker. He said, that means that Elijah ruled from beyond the grave. He said he was so great, he reached out from beyond the grave to guide the destiny of men. Brothers and sisters, as I began to get popular, the word was whispered about, a hypocrite is going to rise up. That's going to make Malcolm's work look like the work of a little child. How many of you heard that? Raise your hands. All right. And how many of you who heard it had your eyes on me as that chief hypocrite? Yeah, you did. Maybe you ain't got courage enough to raise your hand, but I'll raise my hand, your hand for you. I mean, it was a hell of a thing for me to come to San Francisco and know that in the Bay Area I was being called secretly a hypocrite. I'm preaching the messenger with all my heart. 
And brother said, you know who that next hypocrite's going to be? Yeah, fire coming, man. Watch fire coming. And God had you watching me so the real one could come up and slip in like the scripture 